Welcome to our training on an engineer's guide to setting up a SCADA control and monitoring system. We will be introducing SCADA software using SCADA tags, making screens for control and monitoring, using SCADA objects, making trend charts, data logging, and also using alarms. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. Aviva Edge is a scalable and versatile development and runtime software for control and monitoring applications. It's being used for a wide range of applications, everything from small scale embedded data logging type systems to large multi-site remote monitoring control and automation applications. <clears throat> um, I'm Maria Santella, sales manager at ICP DAS USA. ICP DAS provides industrial automation equipment for monitoring and control. Our equipment is low DC voltage, supports a wide operating temperature range, is ROHS lead free, and our manufacturing has ISO 9001 certification. We provide fast service, technical support, free easy data logger, control and monitoring software. We ship orders out within about one week and we provide a one year warranty. Robert Morrell, our senior technical application engineer, will be demonstrating Aviva Edge SCADA software later in the training, and we'll be going over the different things that you see here on the screen. Please enter in your comments or questions, and we will be answering and responding to them. If you're working on any SCADA projects, we can also provide you with online training that's specifically catered around your project so we can help you implement your project during the training class. Aviva Edge connects easily to almost any PLC, controller or data acquisition device, and it allows you to create graphical user interfaces for remote HMI applications for use over websites, smartphones, tablets, or computers. It supports a variety of operating systems, and you can upgrade licenses to the latest versions to add more tags, sync clients, and more. Aviva Edge is the full Windows-based package for advanced SCADA applications. <clears throat> Aviva Edge HMI has a small footprint, and it works on Windows-embedded operating systems. Aviva Edge Compact HMI works specifically on Windows CE operating systems. Aviva Edge IoT View works on Linux, so it can work on our Linpack controllers that have Linux. It also works on small Linux-based devices like Raspberry Pi devices. Um, so Aviva Edge supports many different kinds of industries, including oil and gas energy, manufacturing, automotive building, machinery, solar, wastewater, and um, it comes with many industry-specific templates for fast application development. Aviva supports remote accessibility for remote monitoring and control, so you can make different pages for your graphical interface that you can interact with through a web browser, through HTML5, and you can see them see it on also mobile devices, tablets, also at the remote um, runtime PC running the SIGGATA software so you can have on-site and off-site access. It supports alerts and alarms so you can make reports and also export it to formats like PDF and have them emailed out based on a schedule. Um, alarms can be determined in real time, and you can also have historical alarm logs so you can see the status, for example, of maybe when a, a tank was past a certain level. It supports FTP, so you can also upload or download files. It supports sending the emails and the text messages for real-time updates. It has FDA traceability. And so there's also, um, uh, those are often used in pharmaceutical and food applications. 
there's like a over 250 communication drivers, including RFID readers, PLCs, temperature controllers, motion controllers. It supports connection to SQL, Access, Excel, or other kinds of databases. It supports multiple languages, uh, supports scripting, redundancy, so you can do a whole lot with it. Um, the software licenses are available in runtime development and development and runtime in one. You can get a development license to run on one computer and then deploy applications with runtime licenses installed at different sites on different computers. You can also get licenses um, either as a soft key that we email to you, or you can get it as a USB hard key that we ship out. You, we could usually email you the soft keys the same day you place an order, and with USB hard keys, we can ship them out within a few days. Each development and runtime license comes with one web sim client that you can use to view your system through a web page or over the mobile app. You can also purchase additional thin clients for concurrent remote viewing sessions. Licenses are available from with 150 to unlimited tags. Um, <clears throat> the, the runtime comes in as low as 150 tags. I believe the development starts at 1500. Uh, you can purchase upgrades if you want to add more tags as needed. And you can also um, upgrade to different versions in the future. Uh, the latest versions have the, the latest updates. Right now it's a version 23 is the latest. Data tags are objects that represent variables for use in your application. These tags allow for real-time access data. <clears throat> they help you to quickly and visually see tank levels, pressure levels, motor or drive intensity, a pumping status, on-off status, and the state of all your processes. Variables can be defined as Boolean, discrete, on or off, integer, positive and negative numbers, real numbers for continuous measurements, strings with letters and numbers, arrays, a data structure holding a collection of variables, classes, data structures for creating objects, and indirect or pointer tags that get their value from other tags. Tag names should follow this syntax. Start the tag names with the letter. They can be up to 255 characters long. They must be unique and they're not case sensitive. So like um, a capital T-A-N-K for tank, it will be the same in your application as lowercase T-A-N-K. Boolean tags, um, those can be the on or off status of a piece of equipment or machinery. Integer tags can be positive or negative like acceleration. Real types are floating point real numbers so that could be something like a temperature, like 98.50 degrees. String tag types hold up to 1,024 characters and could hold a sentence like, the process is now complete. <clears throat> In Aviva Edge SCADA software, arrays are one-dimensional data structures that hold a collection of variables in an index that uniquely identifies the item. An array could hold variables for a team of five people, with each object in the array being one of the five people. Classes are data structures for creating objects that have multiple attributes shared by all objects of the class that are being monitored or controlled. Class template can consist of one or more data types. Tank has a fill level, temperature, location, high level, and a low level. Many manufacturing processes include many tanks, all of which could be at different levels, locations, and temperatures. You could show tanks on the screen in a similar layout to how they are in the actual application. You can put little tags 
that um, are laid on top of the tanks that display all the different um, tank levels, temperature, and other information. <clears throat> Indirect or pointer tags get their value from other tags in the database. They hold the address of the variable they want to point to. The variable could be stored elsewhere. For example, in your phone, you have numbers. The numbers are stored for people, <clears throat> each with different names. In your phone interface, click their name, and their phone number is what gets called. Their name points to the phone number in the database. In this oil drilling application, our ET7017 Modbus TCP-based data acquisition modules are networked over Ethernet cabling to a PC with an Ethernet switch. ET7017 has 4 to 20 milliamp inputs that are mapped up to gather pressure and oil flow in an oil drilling application. There's an on button that when it's pushed, the drilling process is either on or off. It shows in red when it's on, and it uh, dims, it shows as, as not lit up when it's off. This application is accessible over the Aviva mobile app, a web browser, or locally on site through the SCADA application running on Windows 11 computer. The oil pressure is defined in the application as a real number. The flow of oil in gallons per minute is also defined as a real number. The drilling process is a Boolean discrete variable that's either on or off. <clears throat> data software applications communicate with PLCs, controllers, and data acquisition equipment through software drivers. Aviva Edge comes with over 250 native communication drivers for lots of different kinds of equipment, including Modbus TCP drivers that work with Modbus TCP data acquisition equipment like our Ethernet I.O. modules. We have these Ethernet I.O. modules, they can be, they have a DIN rail mount and they can be stacked up to three high, like the piggyback mounting. They come in many different kinds of configurations, including analog, digital, current, relay, RTD, strain gauge, thermocouple, voltage, and more. In addition to these Modbus TCP type data acquisition modules, we also have other data acquisition equipment in other protocols, including CanOpen, DeviceNet, Ethernet IP, EtherCAT, Modbus RTU, Mod Q MQTT, OPCQA, Profibus, Profinet, USB, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, and more. Now, these are powered with the 10 to 30 VDC input. These are Modbus TCP ones, and they um, the power over Ethernet types are also available. <clears throat> The Aviva Edge SCADA software comes with a comprehensive HMI control and monitoring tool set. So you can easily make screens, draw shapes, add scripts, make push buttons, check boxes, buttons, messages, map functions. You can also add communication with different equipment, controls, uh, make different layouts, and um, make different pages and, and navigation menus for navigating to the different pages in your application. When you're designing a user interface, it's best to try to keep your design simple. You should consider who's going to be using your HMI, and what kind of people are interfacing with it. Are they wearing gloves, you know, uh, for different layout and spacing? You want to keep in mind um, to give the user feedback and messages on the screen that correspond with what they may expect. Using colors like button with the, when you push it, green means go and, and red means stop. It might help highlight the button for the desired action. If you allow the user of your application to delete or make some sort of permanent change, you might want to add a, are you sure type message. Font size on your screen and HMI screens um, needs to be considered when you design. So you'll make sure you, the users can click, see, and interface with the screens properly. 
It's helpful if your design is consistent throughout. So once users learn how to do something in your interface, they should be able to transfer that knowledge to using other areas in your program. Data shape objects include select line, line properties, open and closed polygons, rectangles, positioning, layering, shape ID, selecting multiple objects, reference points, radius points, color fill, distribution, and tab order. Similar to how you would draw shapes in Paint or Photoshop type applications, you click the shape object from the menu at the top then you make a line on the screen where you, you click the line um, to where you want it to start. <clears throat> and then you point and drag it, or let it go where you want it to stop. Same for the different shapes. You can also change the colors if you double click them. To add a button on your screen, you click a button from the toolbar at the top. You add a label, color, and value from the options in the pop-up box on your screen. You also click the text to enter text on the screen and add variables that you want displayed. You add navigation buttons that go to other screens. And then, you know, you can uh, draw out a storyboard on a piece of paper um, or, a, on, you know, on a, a document. Or you can just make sure, depending on how simple your application is, just make sure whenever you navigate to some page, there's a way to get back. <clears throat> so uh, the SCADA software comes with a comprehensive tool set for you to make your interfaces and um, can double click, click options on the screens to change parameters. Check boxes can be either on or off. Radio buttons allow you to select one of a group of items. List boxes hold a list of items for the selection. Combo boxes are just like list boxes, but there's an additional text field. So you can add options that aren't in the existing list. Map functions can be used to perform calculations that can be saved to variables for display. So you can show, for example, five different temperatures, and then you can show um, an average temperature on the screen gathered from some of those different points in, the, in a warehouse. You can also use trend objects to show the status of measurements over time. You can configure the trend object properties with the buttons and options shown here. And Robert's going to show you more in a little while. You can set different colors for different variables and also show bar objects that show the current level. Labels or other object layers can be added to show the expected levels in your system. Alarm objects can alert and display when processes or equipment in your application need attention. And set high and low alarm levels through the interface in your project. Um, now I'm going to be passing it over to Robert for a tutorial on using Aviva SCADA software. Okay, so today for our live demonstration, we're going to show you our Aviva Edge software. I'll show you how to create some Modbus TCP tags uh, uh, for our data acquisition module, or PET 7019Z. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, we'll show you how to create some objects on the screen, how to view the data, how to control the data and monitor the data. I'll use some SCADA objects within the demonstration. I will uh, create a trend curve and show you how to do it. Um, it's very simple. And let's see, we'll do some data logging of the channels. And finally, I'll show you how to use an alarm to trigger a response. Let's get started. Okay, first of all, this is our ET7019Z. It's a data acquisition module, which has analog inputs. I currently have one connected to my PC. Um, let's see, I can see some data over here. Um, let's see, so I have one, two, three, four, five channels of data, uh, starting at AI0, 
through AI4. Uh, let's see, today we'll utilize this module to create a project in Aviva Edge. So first I want to create a project in Aviva Edge. I'm just going to create a new project. For this one, I'll just call it uh, Web Training. And we'll just use the default um, configuration. Uh, we're going to use a Windows PC. Let's see, I'll use the standard resolution. Uh, don't care about security for this. Don't care about password. Yes, I want to continue. We're only going to do local mode. I'm just going to skip through these steps. Everything's going to be default. We don't need to set up any password for this demonstration. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is create our connection to the uh, Modbus TCP data acquisition module. So first thing I want to do is uh, add a driver. I want to go here and select my communication driver. For this one, I'm going to use Modbus TCP. Uh, we want MOTCP here. Uh, it's added down here. I click OK. Uh, then we need to open up the main driver sheet, which is created because I added that driver. Uh, my main driver sheet will look like this. Um, let's see, from here, I need to add and create my tags. And I need to, um, what do you call it? Create the connection, which shows the station number, the IP address, and the port 502, along with the address, which is achievable or findable in the Modbus register table manual. Um, so first, I will create a tag called AI0. Um, once I type that in and press Enter, the system will ask me if I want to create it. I just click Yes. And we will create the tag. We want an integer tag. And let's see, for this one, the uh, uh, station ID is the IP address of the module. 230 colon. Uh, the port number, which is 502, which is pretty much a Modbus standard, but it is settable in the software. And finally, the uh, slave address of the module. Uh, the next thing I'll ask for is the IO address. For this one, this is findable in the Modbus register table. It's a analog input register, and we're just going to use the very first one. So it's 3x colon 1. Now I'm going to create some more tags uh, very quickly. Let's just create it AI1, enter, yes, yes, and AI2, oh, let's see, that should be a capital for consistency, oops, two, yes, I'm going to create it, AI3, yes, and finally, AI4. Okay, since these are all from the same module, I'm just going to copy this uh, station, station information to all five of these. Uh, the IO address is 3x colon, oops, 3x colon 2, 3x colon 3, 3x colon 4, and finally 3x colon 5. Okay, so I've created my tags. The next thing I want to do is add some graphics to the screen. So what I want to do is go to Graphics tab here and add a screen. I just simply click on Screens, right-click, and insert a screen. For this one, I just I just like to call it main. Um, if you want, you can name it page one, page two, uh, whatever you would like. Uh, you can uh, use the attributes to select a background, select a background color, or uh, any of the features shown here. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use a white background. Uh, let's see. First, I want to just create some text so that I can, uh, you'll know what each uh, value is. So I'll just call these, oops, AI0. And we'll just copy this, control C, oops, select it, control C, control V. Uh, let's see, let's edit it. Actually, you know, I thought of a better way. Let's just create this. And what we'll do is 
we'll create a text box, which we can see the analog value. Just simply draw it like this, and we double click on it, and we select the tag that we want to display here. So under tag and expression, I select the three dots. It brings up a list of my tags. I want to display AI0. So I just click away and close it. Now AI0 will show up here. Let me copy this box multiple times. Control C. Uh, delete that. Select this. Control C and Control V. Drag it over here. Do Control V again. AI2. AI3. And finally, AI4. We'll label these. Let's delete that and go back to draw. Let's go here and we'll just label it AI1. And you can, of course, name it anything you want. Um, AI2. And let's see, the last two are actually temperature. So I'll just call it, uh, let's see, we'll call it temp1 and temp2. our temperature one and we'll move it over a little bit so you can see the one and finally we'll create a label called uh what's called temperature uh temp two just to make it easy okay so again i have my five tags shown here these are referenced uh in the web hmi and uh, let's see, we're receiving temperature values in the last two channels and some voltage measurements on the first three channels. Um, the next thing I want to do is create a trend curve. Uh, with the trend object, you just simply select trend over here on the right side at the top. You draw your trend curve, draw the box. Uh, with this object, you just double click on it. And what we want to do is select our points to add to... <laughs> to the project. So under points, I click uh, tag field. Again, just double click and uh, or actually we call it AI zero, enter, then AI one, enter, AI, oops, AI two, enter. And note that these are the tag names, not the label uh, that we created previously. So the AI four. Uh, what I want to do is also let's change the color of these so that it's not so boring. We'll select this color for this one. We'll go with uh, orange for this one. We'll go with green. And finally, we'll go with, uh, let's pick a blue. I like this blue. Okay, so now let's see. We've created that. If we want to update anything like the axis information or legend, for this one, we don't need to. We'll just uh, use the standard uh, auto scale. So I've entered all the properties there. Next, I want to create an exit button. This is more to just exit the project and quit. Uh, for this, I'm going to use a system symbol. There's many different symbols you can use here in various categories. You can use the arrows, you can use the building automation pictures, you can use face plates. But all I care about right now is using one simple object. It's called the exit button. To do this, I just double click on it and it brings me back to the home screen. And this is the exit button. I'll just place it down here. And note that there are many different objects in the library that you can use. These are pre-created buttons with some script scripting in the background, so it makes it very easy to use. Um, let's see, there's many different ones. Uh, there's pictures of valves, you know, many different valve objects. Some of these you can edit. You can also add device, or I'm sorry, add images of your own to the uh, sheet. Next thing we want to do is to create an alarm table. Let's see, to do this, we just click over here and draw our alarm event table here. The next thing we want to have to do is create some alarms to trigger. So then that is done under the task bar. And we just simply go over here and select alarms. Uh, we right click and insert. Uh, what we want to do is 
put in our tag name uh, for this. Let's just select, um, well, let's do AI zero and we'll just use a high, high alarm. If the, uh, the alarm value is over, uh, let's see, let's say six volts or in this case, 600, I believe is what it'll display. So then let's see, we will say, um, high limit alarm oops and next we'll just do ai uh four and we'll just put in a value of i don't know 20 and we'll call it temperature alarm uh let's see, you have the ability to acknowledge these alarms in the table uh, if you don't want to have the acknowledge, you can, you know, modify the properties here. But uh, this is just a simple alarm setup that I'll show you how it works in a moment. Uh, the next thing we want to do is make sure we save this. So I just click here and it prompts me to save it. And just sheet one. We'll go back to our drawing. Um, let's see. I think we're ready to try it. So what I want to do is do save all, first of all. Let me just save it and then we'll run it. And if all goes well, we should see some analog input values there. Uh, let's see, I'm showing some analog values there, but for some reason I'm seeing the same value in all of them. I am seeing the trend curve update, so that's good. I don't think I've change the tag name when I copy the object. So what I'll do is I'll exit. We'll go back here and I'll modify the tag name, which is what I thought. I need to go here, make that AI one. This one AI two. Close. AI three. And finally, AI4. Once we close this, let's save it all again. And this time we should be seeing different values here. Yep, and I do see these values here, which are changing. If I hold my finger on the thermocouple, this last value should start going up, and it is. So I think we're good. We have our alarm values over here. Uh, if I Acknowledge the alarm, it turns green and goes to the top, and there's a checkbox that appears there. My data is showing here on the uh, trend curve. Um, the next thing I want to show you is how to do some data logging. So if we wanted to save these values to a file, uh, first of all, we go back to the project, the development project, and then also under the tasks uh, tab, we do trend logger. And we just double click or right click and do insert. I'll always have to specify the tag name that we want to do. For this one, I'll do AI0, uh, AI1, let's do all of them, AI2, AI3, and finally AI4. Let's see, for this demo, we'll use it so that it uses the proprietary database and we'll save it every second. If you want, you can save it on change or save it however you want. But for this demonstration, we'll just use the default, which saves it every second. So every one second, it'll save the data file. So now I want to just click on run and we'll run it for a moment, get some data. Let's see, let me go over here and find the file. So let's see, it saves in my documents folder, Viva Edge projects, uh, project name, I called this web training. Uh, the data shows up under historian. Well, is it historian or what is the database? Nope, it was a historian. I think I need to stop it first. So let's click over here, stop. 
Yeah, let's go back over here. And I think we should see something under. Oh no, what did I do? No, it was here. Should have been there. Okay, let's troubleshoot. Okay, so I created the tags. I saved this. Oh, I didn't do save all, maybe? Ah, darn. That's it, I think. Okay, once I click run now, hopefully everything works. Okay, so you need to save the page before doing it, but that's easy to do. Now in the history folder, I do show some data. Now, let's see, it's continuously updating now, but I can't open the file. Let's see, if I open it in uh, just Notepad, it shows up as funny looking characters. What we need to do is convert the data to a different format. It goes into the proprietary format into a hist file. To modify that, I need to find a file in the Indusoft folder. Let me go there. And let's see now, it's under oh, my C colon drive under programs x86 Aviva. It was in the bin folder. It's called hist to text. There we go. Right click, copy this, and we copy this into the folder over here. And to convert the data, oh, where'd my pasting go? Okay. I'm not sure why it says it's there, but it should be here. Why is it not showing? Let's go here and let's go back here and see if it's there. There it is. Okay, so in order to convert the file to a text or CSV format, just simply drag it over the top and it'll do its thing and create another file, which of course doesn't show, but it will in a second. Oh, what happened to it? Let's try one more time. Hmm. Not sure why it's not, oh, maybe it's because it's open. Let me go back here and stop the project. Okay, history file, we want to convert it to hist. There we go. Okay, so now we have both the original file and a TXT file. The TXT file will show the data, and this is the data we were receiving from the five channels, one, two, three, four, five channels of data. Um, let's see, that concludes the demonstration for today, but if anyone has any questions or would like to go over any aspects of this, uh, please let us know. Um, I'll answer some questions now if you have any. Okay, um, let's see, so that concludes the demonstration. I did answer a few questions through the question and answer box. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to either raise your hand or um, you can, uh, or I'm sorry, raise your hand and we'll unmute the mic so you can ask the question live or you can type it in the chat box, or I'm sorry, Q&A box, so we'll answer it for you. Marie, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, let's see, I don't see any questions or any raised hands. Um, let's see, sorry about all the technical problems this time. This presentation will be posted on the website. And uh, if you do want a copy of the project or want to go over any aspect of the project after the fact, uh, please let us know. We could set up a Zoom meeting for uh, you personally, and we can go over any aspect of it and we can answer any questions or do any modifications. 